In React with TypeScript, you might be tempted to roll individual change handlers for each field in a component. Today, I'll show you how to avoid this redundant work and just write one change handler. Okay, so here's the simple use case. Let's create a React form that would populate a user. We first want to create the type of our user, and this will be a fairly simple type. We will have a name, which is a string, and an age, which will be a number, uh, but perhaps we can also be null. And finally, we will have admin, which will be a Boolean. And this might represent a user in our uh, application or database. So let's see how this might look in the context of a React component. We might create a default user of type user. And so we would give it a name which will be blank to start with. Then we will give an age, which will start as null. And finally, we will give an admin status, which we should probably default to false. In our app, we might use the use state hook. We will say const user and set user equals use state, which we will pull from React. And we will pass it to our default user. And since we've told uh, TypeScripts that are default users of type user, it should know that user is type user and set user will set the type of user. Perfect. Now within our component, we will make sure that we return some sort of form. We'll just do some really bare bones stuff here. We'll say the value for this is user.name and we can add another input and the value is going to be user.age or uh, just because we want this to be a controlled component, we'll say or an empty string if our age is null. Uh, and then finally, we might have an input that is of type checkbox that will uh, be checked if it is uh, user.admin and will not be checked if the user is not an admin. Great. So now we've done a little scaffolding of our application here. So how do we handle change properly? Well, so one option, as I mentioned before, is that we might create different change handlers for each input, but that could be a little redundant and we don't actually don't have to do that. So maybe we can create uh, one change handler and we can call it const on user change. And so how are we, how are we gonna set this up? Well, we're gonna wanna take a prop and this is probably going to be sort of like a key of user and we're going to want a value and uh, we don't really know right now how we're going to want to type this but it's going to be dependent on our key of user so we're going to want it to be the type of the key that we're changing so if we're changing name we're going to want it to be a string if we're changing age it needs to be number or null if it's admin it needs to be boolean okay we'll get to that in a second but so what we could theoretically do is say set user and we can spread the existing user object and then say we want prop to be of type value. Great. And so this works right now because we've said value is any, but we actually want our, um, we actually want TypeScript to be a little more thorough and say throw a fit if we try to use on change incorrectly. And I'll show you what you what what I mean here is that if we add an on change handler to our first name input, and let's say we just say on user change and name, if we pass the value of five, we know that's not of uh, the correct type for our name property. But TypeScript is okay with it because we've kind of nullified any type safety that we might have been able to do by saying we have a value of any here. So how can we make this a little safer? Well, we can use generics and we can say for this function that uh, we are going to have prop b of type p and our generic will say that p extends key of user. And then what we can say is the value is of type user p. Okay, 
So now we're actually seeing something interesting down here in that our TypeScript compiler is saying, well, wait a second, five is not of the correct type. It needs to be of type string. So that's great. Um, so what we can do now is we can kind of make this a little more real down in our inputs. We can say that this is going to have some sort of event here. We can say that e.target.value is what is passed to this on change handler. And uh, we can add an on change for our age as well. And again, event, and we can say on user change. And this one is for age. And so we can say e.target.value. And oh, our compiler is helpfully telling us that, hey, the value that we pulled from this input is going to be a string. So you're going to have to do something about this, which makes actually makes some sense. So we might then say parse int e.target.value. And now our compiler is happy because we are now providing it with a numeric value for our numeric type. So finally, with our checkbox, we can add an on change here. And we will pass a function that says on user change. And this will be for admin. And we are simply going to provide it with not user.admin. And yeah, we should be happy because we're just essentially toggling the truthiness or faultiness of this input. And so we can see we have a numeric data type, we have a string data type, and we have a Boolean data type, all handled by the same on user change change handler. And this is able to be done in a type safe way by using this handy generic that we can use with our function and being sure that when we set our user, we are super type safe.